Manure is a necessary part of the pig production process and is an important nutrient source for crops. Environmental stewardship and being a good neighbor requires the proper management of the manure. In storage, while being transferred, and during land application to prevent spills and minimize odor. There are many federal, state, and local regulations regarding manure management practices that must always be followed. Also important when managing manure is understanding the hazards to you and the pigs. This presentation will focus on the safe management and handling of manure. Manure in deep pit structures produces gases that can be fatal to both humans and livestock. The four primary gases produced from decomposing manure are hydrogen sulfide, methane, ammonia, and carbon dioxide. In high concentrations, hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, and carbon dioxide gases can cause death by asphyxiation in both humans and animals. Explosions can occur when oxygen mixes with methane. Being able to identify the source and effects or symptoms of these respiratory hazards will help you prevent hazardous exposures to gases and may save your life. Hydrogen sulfide is a flammable poisonous gas that has an odor of rotten eggs, but only at very low levels. Higher levels will deaden the sense of smell while small amounts quickly and severely irritate eyes, throat, and lungs. Even low concentrations will cause immediate loss of consciousness and death. In animals, constant exposure at low levels could induce a fear of light, nervousness, and loss of appetite. As concentration increases, animals will vomit and will suffer from diarrhea and eventually death. Do not enter a barn where manure is being agitated or where hydrogen sulfide is suspected. Ammonia is a pungent, colorless, noxious gas released during decomposition and agitation of manure. Ammonia is easily detected even in small concentrations. At low levels, it can irritate eyes, throat, and lungs. Long-term exposure may make you more susceptible to respiratory diseases. Concentrations as low as 0.5% may cause suffocation. For hogs, at non-lethal levels, symptoms include sneezing, increased salivation, and loss of appetite. A simple ammonia testing kit will help to identify elevated levels. Keep facilities well ventilated and let your supervisor know if you suspect ammonia may be causing a problem. Carbon dioxide is a heavy, colorless, odorless, non-flammable gas that is released as animals and humans breathe. It is also a product of decomposition and common in manure storage. Humans have no reaction to low levels of carbon dioxide, but a 10% concentration will cause panting and dizziness. Methane is released during decomposition and agitation of manure. Methane is colorless, odorless, and usually non-toxic, but it is flammable and poses an explosion hazard. How you set up your ventilation for pumping your pits depends on three things. The weather, so the temperature and the wind speed, the size of the pigs in your barn, and the type of ventilation your barn has. Let's talk about the type of ventilation. The barn that we're in is a 70 foot wide natural tunnel or tunnel barn. It has a bank of fans on one end of the barn that pulls the air through the barn. In this type of ventilation system, you should never lower the sidewall curtains while pumping or agitating the pit. The barn should be in tunnel ventilation while pumping or agitating your pit. Put the barn in tunnel ventilation by manually lowering the tunnel curtain opening the ceiling inlets to one to two inches maximum opening 
turning on your stir fans if you have stir fans in the barn. And lastly, turning on some tunnel fans based on the temperature and the size of the pigs that you have in the barn. Remember, in this style barn, do not lower the sidewall curtains. Leave the ventilation set this way during pumping and agitation and for at least two hours after you've stopped pumping and agitating. In a natural or power natural barn, you do need to utilize the sidewall curtains along with any fans in order to maintain good ventilation during pumping and agitation. Doctors Mike Brum and Jay Harmon developed a great pit pumping guideline to follow for setting your ventilation. As stated earlier, it's important to agitate your pit to make sure the nutrients are evenly mixed. If not done correctly, agitation can increase the risk of asphyxiation of the pigs. Here's some steps to follow to lower that risk. First, do not agitate the pit until the liquid level is at least two feet below the slats and then agitate slowly. Second, avoid aggressive agitation while pigs are in the barn. Avoid rooster tailing. Third, do not direct the agitator nozzles towards pillars or walls. Fourth, Use only the bottom agitator nozzle. Fifth, stop agitating when the bottom nozzle is less than six inches below the manure surface. Sixth, do not uncover pump out ports unless it's necessary for agitation and manure loadout. Seventh, if pump outs are uncovered, then use a pump out curtain like the one being used here or something similar to eliminate the pump out port as an air inlet. Having this open with no curtain or cover can force gases into the pig space and increase the risk of asphyxiation. Once you've finished pumping the pit, make sure all pump out covers have been properly secured. Watch for pit foam and use caution, especially when agitating manure or pressure washing a room where ventilation has been reduced. If foam is present, remove potential sources of ignition, such as pilot lights on heaters. Manure pits and lift stations are considered a permit required confined space and safety precautions must be taken before entering. Do not enter without training, a permit and authorization. Testing for oxygen content and gases, proper safety equipment, including breathing apparatus and safety harness, and an outside observer are required before entering. Your life may be at immediate risk if you do not follow all manure pit entry procedures. Better still, use a professional who is trained in the requirements and dangers of manure pit entry. Do not attempt to rescue someone who has collapsed in a manure pit without following the procedures. Call 911 for help. Deep pit storage under the barn generally has the capacity to hold about six months worth of manure. Check pits regularly for manure levels and foaming. There should be at least 19 inches between the top of the slats and the top of the manure. Agitation is required prior to pumping out stored manure to ensure nutrient distribution. Odor and gases are released as manure is agitated. Remember to be considerate to your neighbors. Whenever possible, it is preferable to agitate and apply manure on sunny warm days when odors will be drawn upwards and to avoid agitation and application on windy days when odors may be blown towards neighbors. Avoid spreading on weekends and holidays when people may be engaged in outdoor activities. Follow these steps before you start agitating. Keep yourself safe. It is recommended that gas monitors are worn when pumping and agitating. Have the farm emergency action plan on hand and up to date. Check for pit foam. 
If possible, agitate when no animals are present in the barn or move the animals away from the agitation area. Move pigs that are close to an end wall or end curtain as gas accumulation can be greater in these areas. Identify someone to monitor any livestock that remains in the barn from outside. Do not enter the barn during or immediately after agitation or pumping. Turn off electrical power to all non-ventilation equipment and extinguish any gas pilot lights, brooder heaters, or other ignition sources. If the pigs that remain in the barn are young and require heat during agitation or pumping, brooder heaters are the preferred method. However, avoid agitating or pumping out barns where pigs weigh less than 25 pounds unless absolutely necessary. Finally, prevent anyone from entering the barns by locking all entrance doors and placing a label or caution tape on the doors. The well-being of the animals is important, but your safety is the number one priority on the farm. Thanks for watching.